It's a great day to be LA here with Ethan and Eric Lay uh, at Vince Kennedy Stadium getting ready for game two against the Ridgefield Raptors. And just wanted to start off by asking you guys, uh, how is it to be here and Ben together? Oh, Ben's awesome. I mean, are we holding this? <laughs> yeah, no, Ben's sweet, man. It's, it's so nice up here and it's just a great group of guys. It's just great time, great time. Have you enjoyed your stint just coming to visit your son? Yeah, I have. It's been really cool. I've been here for about 24 hours. Yeah, rolled in at game time yesterday. It's all that Ethan told me it was. The vibe is great. Uh, Life's relaxed. Atmosphere and wind all around, not just the baseball field. So it's, it's a really cool place to be. I've never been here before. So obviously, Ethan, going off to Chico State after working with your dad in high school. So what have you been able to learn through your first couple of years playing college ball? I mean, it's just a whole different game. Strike zones, tighter just better hitters all around. I mean, coming from a small high school and then playing in, in that type of atmosphere, it's just, you gotta be able to command your pitches 10 times better and, and you gotta be able to uh, get outs in, in every different way, strikeouts, pop-ups, ground outs. I mean, it's just a whole different game. So taking it back to the very beginning, where did you know that Ethan was gonna be a baseball player? Oh, it was a pretty young age uh, when he first picked up a baseball. It was kind of his first love. He. Uh, we, we, that's basically all we've done since he could walk. Um, and he was pretty natural at it from the beginning. You could tell he had great hand-eye coordination and he had love for the game. So it was going to be something that he, he pursued, you could tell right away. When did you know you really wanted to focus on pitching? Mm, pitch, I mean, I always loved hitting when I was a kid, but I always, I mean, just watching, just watching the college and, and, uh, and pro guys, obviously, it's just, it's a whole different game hitting, man. It's, and I can't, I can't handle not succeeding all the time. You know, I, I got to be able to, uh, I like being able to succeed 90% of the time rather than 30% than of the time. So I just, pitching just more for me. <laughs> it's something you can control, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to see, as you guys were growing up together and you were working with your dad, um, what was that process like working with your dad growing up? Oh, man. Um, I mean, it's just an everyday thing. I mean, we would, it was pretty much just catch, hit ground balls every single day and and uh you know you, you get off the mound sometimes but even when you're playing catch it's just focusing on on hitting your guy in the chest and and uh throwing it where you want to throw it and then just really getting better uh at every every aspect and and all that stuff plays into to pitching too i mean when you play the rest of the game it's just you just see everything so much better and being dad slash coach how is it balancing that dynamic it was tough um it was tough because you, you you're trying to balance it, and you obviously you know we want your team to uh, to succeed, you want your son to succeed. You also have to you know you're the coach, so uh, I know more times than not it was I was unfair on Ethan. I was tougher on him than I was on everybody else. I just thought that's the way it should be, um, and he handled it well. Uh, he handled it uh, much better as he got older. He understood that, that process, and uh, so it, it was it was a tough balancing act, but um, I wouldn't change it for the world. And so then, he, right, like you said, he handled it well, and you get to high school. And when I was looking at this stat sheet, I seriously could not believe. That's why I brought it with me today to make sure I get everything right. This is truly video game numbers, folks. 26-1 record, 0.32 ERA, 255 strikeouts, 157 innings pitched over your four years. When you hear those numbers out loud again, what do you even process in your mind? I mean, it's just... I would never expect it to, to do anything like that. It's just kind of when you're around the team, I mean, if you knew the team that you're around, I mean, it's just it's easy to play with those guys. And and like I said, I mean, when you just can command your pitches and, and you don't walk guys, and, and that's what we really focused on. And, and uh, especially at, at our level, I mean, I went to a small school, so it's just if you can be around the zone and, and be effective with all your pitches, then, then you're going to be successful. Did you even expect him to be capable of those kind of numbers? Um, yes and no. I mean, from the time he started pitching, he, he, the one thing he could always do is throw strikes. And the other thing he always did was he was he competed at a high level. Like, he loved to pitch. Um, when you talked earlier about uh, the hitting and pitching aspect, he, he was always a really good hitter, but he was always most comfortable and, and loved pitching. So I kind of knew at some point this was going to be the case. Um, those are video game stats. We, he, he was blessed to be on uh, those four years, you know, co uh, barring COVID, great, great group of kids that made just a great run. So he had great support behind him. But yeah, he, he was <laughs> he was pretty special those few years. Yeah. And then how about that stretch of 97 and a third of scoreless frames? What was it like going through that process? I mean, it was just, 
I, just being able to just focus for that long is, is the biggest thing. But, I mean, it's just – it was unreal. It was an awesome experience, awesome experience. So what do you remember most about working at Colosa High School? I mean, it's just a close family environment. I mean, you're around – you know everybody in your class. You know most of the people in the school. So it's just, I love being able to, to have that family, and it, it truly is a family just because it's, it's 400 kids. And, and a, so I knew all my teachers all really well and, and all the kids well, and it's just, I wouldn't change it. wouldn't change it. And like you said, that was a special four years for him to be a part of. So what was so special about that 2022 team that won the section championship? Well, like on a selfish note, that was a group that, I mean, I coached for a long time, but that's a group I grew up with. You know, I had a, most of those guys in Little League uh, from the time they're eight years old. So to kind of see them grow and, and compete, and not just compete in baseball, but one of the things about being a small school is you, you play all three sports. You know, you have to to, to be a uh, you know, to, to have a competitive uh, program. So it was a special group to me because I probably spent the most time with any of the groups I've been with with those guys just because Ethan was on the team and we did the Little League thing and we did the travel ball and we did summer ball and we did fall ball and we, we fought through COVID together and got back on the field. So it was that probably made it as special as anything is having, you know, one of those years taken away from us. Um, and uh, so just a special group. They, they worked their tails off and uh, they reward ultimately with, with just a great, you know, season in 2022. And like you said, playing at a small school, you had to play all three sports, so you played basketball and cross country. What were some things that you learned from those sports that you were able to bring into your baseball game? I mean, cross country is, it's, it's the hardest sport I've played, and it's straight grit. So, I mean, you'd really, you really learn to just kind of roll with the punches in that because you never want to stop. And, and basketball, I mean, honestly, for the longest time, I, I like basketball more than I like baseball just because it's, it's just hard. It's just, so basketball is super fun. You get to be in it all the time. And, and with that, you I mean, I mean, I, I was more just for fun for me, honestly. So, I mean, baseball is obviously, it was always fun too. But, yeah, being, being able to play three sports was really awesome. It was really fun. Okay, we've raved and raved about Ethan, but we also got another legend over here. <laughs> 550, over 550 wins in your coaching career over a near quarter century long career of yours in California. One of the winningest coaches and active head coaches in the California scene. So what do you think has enabled that success over the years? Well, Ethan told me he was going to kill me if I said that I've had a lot of great players. Um, I've had a ton of great players. You know, I've coached in Calusa County, which is where Calusa High School is, and I've coached in Maxwell, which was a – a neighboring high school before that and so I have been blessed with a lot of great kids um, I've kind of I like to feel like that uh, more years than not we were always much tougher and we prepared ourselves a little bit better than the teams we played we worked harder uh, that was kind of our motto was to not be outworked and I felt like for the majority of those years that's what we did um, and, and it paid off I mean the kids were willing to do what it took to, to get it done and and then that just became a uh, you know, we have a saying that tradition never graduates, so that just kind of perpetuated itself. Like every year you wanted to be as good as the teams before you, and you didn't want to let those groups down, and it just became, it just kind of snowballed and just became a thing. So. All right, Ethan, what are some things that your dad's too humble for to say? No, I mean, he's had some good players, but he's had everywhere from guys who just picked up a bat in high school to, to college guys, and every single guy, no matter who it was, you know, like, no matter what type of guy they was, they respected him. Like he had the guys that that wouldn't even show respect to teachers, and and somehow they respected him. And he he was just he turned every single guy into uh, someone who loves the game. And with just teams that that combined to to have that respect for him and everybody else and their teammates in the game, I mean you just you're gonna win a lot of games, and that's just really the baseline right there. And so, like you said, developing people and developing players. Your son is a mechanical engineering major over here. So how important is it for you to not only help them help your players be baseball players, but also set them up for life? Yeah, that's what we talk about first is like you're developing life skills. And whether you're going to college to study mechanical engineering or you're going into the workforce or the military, uh, whatever it may be, um, trying to prepare you, um, develop life skills that are going to make you successful. Those, you know, you're know, you going to face challenges, obstacles. You're going to compete for jobs. You're going to compete for spots at colleges, on teams. So whatever we can do here to help that and develop those life skills, the better off you're going to be, whatever route you take. So why did you go into mechanical engineering? Um, I want to shout out my uh, physics teacher, Mr. Townsend. <laughs> he's, he's the GOAT right by this guy. But uh, no, I'm just, I've always liked math and, and physics, so, and that's just the most applied for mechanical engineering, and I want to have that backup for, 
for when I am done playing, uh, whenever that is. And it's been it's been a challenge, and I wouldn't want it either way because I I want to challenge myself on and off the field all the time. What are you most proud of of being the son of your dad? Oh man, most proud of. I mean, besides the accolades, all around he just. He just has respect for everyone that that is in our area. I mean, he grew up 30 minutes away, and and you travel over there. It's called Yuba City. I mean, everyone knows him, everyone likes him. He just it's just a mutual feeling of just respect everywhere. I mean, and you just gotta love that for your dad. What are you most proud of your son? Oh boy, a uh, total package. He's uh, off the field, just a great kid. Like you can talk to anybody and. Um, they just say what a great kid he is, how respectful he is. Um, and, and to be honest, we're most proud about the way he handles uh, schoolwork and balancing mechanical engineering and playing baseball. He's always just attacked everything with a purpose. And so total package, I'm very proud of him, but just he's, he's just a great young man. What do you guys look forward to as your relationships evolve beyond baseball? Ooh, it's kind of always been baseball. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, I, I want to do everything with this guy. I mean, he's he's my best friend. He's he's always been and uh we've done everything together and and it's just I mean, I just wanted to keep on going baseball or not. When your coaching career is all said and done, what do you think are you going to remember the most through your time coaching? Oh, I mean, on a personal note, getting to coach him. I mean, I'm just being selfish, but more than that, just the relationships that I have with all the kids, you know, kids that still will text me out of the blue if we win a championship hey coach congratulations or text me on my birthday or just see him uptown or get to have the tuck so the relationships to me are uh, most important you know those that will baseball will go away all the the winning and all that stuff the losing together goes away but those relationships that you build uh, last a lifetime we got a pretty good relationship here right between the two of you thanks so much to eric and ethan lay for taking the time elks taking on the richfield raptors tonight at 6 35.